All right, time for the dual logs Q and A. Uh, I thought I might as well do one of these on this channel as well, since I do one over on my other one. And uh, this is my second most popular channel, so I thought yeah, I should probably do one on this channel as well, where I just uh, answer questions like once a month. And I'll try to make this one a lot shorter, because one of my other channels is usually like an hour long or something. And I, I don't want this one to be that long. I think I tried doing it like a year ago or something, and then I stopped. I always try stuff on this channel, and I just don't do them anymore because I forget. That's what happens when you just do this as kind of like a, a side thing for fun. Uh, anyways, I have these like preset questions of like commonly asked questions. Uh, next time, hopefully, I'll have enough where I don't have to select my own. But I'll still probably do that anyway. So let's get on with this and start asking questions that I usually get asked a lot. You know, now that I'm thinking, what the hell would I use as a background for this? Usually on my other one, I can just use gameplay footage, but I don't really have stock Yu-Gi-Oh! gameplay footage around. Oh, whatever, I'll think of something later. First question, how old are you? I am 24 years old. Uh, I don't know if that's surprising or not. I, I still feel young, and I uh, sometimes feel really old when I think that I graduated high school six years ago. I've been out of high school longer than I was in it. I don't think there's too many old people playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Is there? I don't know. I wonder how old you guys are. I assume all of you guys are like 16 to... around the ages of like 16 to 20 or something. I know this is a children's card game, but... <laughs> it's usually teenagers who play it. Uh, I mean, there are kids who play it too. Uh, I'll get into that later. I know I have like a story about locals. Uh, let's go on to the next question. When did you start playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, I actually started playing it when I was in fourth grade. So I've been playing it for a really long time. Uh, let's see, when I was in fourth grade, that was in 2001, I think. Uh, yeah, when it first came out over in the US, like in 2001, around that time when the anime started airing, I remember so clearly getting my very first deck of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and I got like the Yugi structure deck and I had like a dark magician and I remember having those cards in my hand it felt so like dreamlike like this is what I saw on TV and now I own this in my hand this is crazy this shouldn't happen and it felt so real and I was like oh man these cards feel so nice and I'd shuffle the deck over and over and I would just feel the sides of it it felt great. Those Yu-Gi-Oh cards were the best. I don't think I'll ever feel that good about owning something ever again. That's when I got my first deck of Yu-Gi-Oh cards in fourth grade. <laughs> but the main reason I still play Yu-Gi-Oh today is because uh, after I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh uh, in fourth grade or whatever, we'd play at the playground. None of us knew the rules, so we'd play like the anime. And... Uh, my mom one day decided that Yu-Gi-Oh was of the devil. Uh, we weren't really that religious, but for some reason Yu-Gi-Oh was devil now, and so she made me throw away all my cards. And I was so mad, and I'm still mad about that, and I will never forgive her for that. That was like the biggest injustice of my life, was having to throw away all my cards. <sighs> uh, I should probably mention my mom was a drug addict, so she was probably high when she did that. That doesn't excuse that behavior, though. I eventually got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! in high school. Uh, I just didn't really have any cards until then. Before then, I still played the game, and I would, like, look up cards and magazines at the store. Because this was before internet was, like, a huge thing, too. So every time we went to the store, I'd go and look at, like, the anime or TCG thing, and I'd look through all the new cards because that's how you found out what came out back then and I would read through all the effects so I kept, I was able to keep up with the game through uh, running to the magazine section and every time I went to the grocery store uh, so I kind of knew what was going on plus uh, my mom would let me buy my own games so I'd always buy the brand new Yu-Gi-Oh games for my Game Boy and it's not like she checked what I played so I played tons of Yu-Gi-Oh games for the Game Boy uh, advance. I don't think there was, I think there was only like one Game Boy game for the Game Boy Color. So I kept up with that and then in high school uh, I remember 
when I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh again in high school, I was walking around like the math buildings in high school. I think I was a a sophomore or a junior. One of those two. And it was game day uh, for football because I used to play football in high school. So I was wearing my football jersey and I had my PSP and I was playing uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force 3 while walking around for some reason. Why the hell was I walking around? I usually sit down and play my video games. Uh, but I remember I had to import Tag Force 3 from Japan. No, from Europe because I never had a US release. So I was playing my newly bought, imported Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force 3 game while wearing my stupid football jersey because they made us wear those on game day. And then I come across these two people uh, who were playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I was like, holy shit. There's other people who like to play this children's card game besides me. I didn't really call it a children's card game back then. I didn't start calling it that until Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge came out. <laughs> God, Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge is so good. Uh... And I was like, oh, you guys are playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And they're like, uh, yeah. They were a little hesitant at first. I was like, oh, so am I. And I show them my PSP and how I'm literally in the middle of a game. They're like, oh, you didn't know anyone else liked to play it either. I was like, oh, cool. And they're like, do you have any cards? I was like, no, but I'll buy some. So I went out and built, uh, I bought a whole bunch of cards off of eBay to make the Law of the Normal OTK. Because I remember seeing Law of the Normal the spell card come out in like one of those old magazines back in the day and I thought it was such a cool card so I wanted to build an entire deck around it. So I just bought a whole bunch of cards. I think I bought them from eBay. I bought them from somewhere. Uh, this was like in 2007 or something so I had the computer by then. Uh, and I had a job too so I must have been a junior in high school when this all happened. Otherwise I wouldn't have been able to buy uh, the PSP or the video game or all those cards. Uh, so I spent a lot of my money on Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and I would just play with those two guys, and we had a couple other people join. And uh, I spent all of my lunch break playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, can you make X deck? X being uh, any kind of deck that you want me to make. I don't know why I have this in here. Usually I do take a lot of fan requests. Like, if you have an interesting deck idea and I read the comment... Uh, there's a chance I'll add it to my deck list, and then I'll make it. And I have a giant deck list of things I'm gonna make. Um, next, next question. Uh, do you watch the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime? Uh, no. I totally did when I was little. I watched the first one. Uh, and I think I watched all of it. Even though I wasn't allowed to watch Yu-Gi-Oh!, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! came on early in the morning, before my mom woke up, so I watched it anyway. And if she did catch me watching Yu-Gi-Oh!, uh, she didn't know what it was. I'm pretty sure she forgot she told me I wasn't allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. Uh, because like I said, she was a drug addict, so... There's that whole, uh, long story about my terrible childhood that, uh, is probably not appropriate for this video. I don't mean to throw a pity party, it wasn't all that bad. Uh, let's see. So, do you watch the anime? No, I don't really watch it. Uh, I think I tried to watch a little bit of 5Ds, but it was kind of boring. And I was like, oh yeah, this is, uh, primarily aimed at children. So I can kind of get why it has a very simple and, uh, story structure. And I think I watched some of GX too, and I thought that was kind of mediocre as well. Uh, but the story I, I got from... I know a lot of the stories from playing all the Yu-Gi-Oh games. I played almost all of them. Kind of. I, I don't really... I never really finished the 5Ds games. So I know most of the story from GX. If the story from the GX Tag Force games holds true. Plus, for everything I've seen from the Abridge series. Uh, they did have a GX Abridge. I don't know if they're still making it. But they had like for the first 10 episodes or something. So I know a little bit about Yu-Gi-Oh GX from the Abridge series. Plus the abridge on the original series. Uh, that's always fun. Little Karibo. He has a great Yu-Gi-Oh! abridge series. Uh, but for all the new stuff, no, not really. Those animes are usually made as just uh, advertisements for their cards. So the story doesn't really have to be that great. But I hear Zaxel wasn't half bad. 
as far as children animes go. And I hear the one that's going on right now isn't half bad either, uh, as far as children anime go. But I'm not going to watch that, because uh, I, the story structure is kind of simple, and it's not really my cup of tea. I like to watch Slice of Life anime, that's my favorite. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's a very different genre. I watch all kinds of genres of anime, but my favorite is definitely Slice of Life. And Yu-Gi-Oh! is definitely not Slice of Life. It's an extremely exaggerated, uh, simple story structure type thing. That's fine if you're into it, but it, it's not really what I like. Uh, and I think I just repeated myself like three times there. And it's really hard to do these things just off the cuff. Next question, do you watch X YouTuber? Uh, I usually get asked if I watch other Yu-Gi-Oh YouTubers, so I'll say the ones I do watch. I usually watch, oh shit, who are they called? X Razor? This is one guy who makes a bunch of gimmick decks too. He does a pretty good job. Uh, rank 10 Yu-Gi-Oh for sure. His Legacy of the Worthless is great. Like, legitimately great. I've watched all of them like three or four times. No, not four times. That's ridiculous. Like two, two times. Three times is crazy, too. I rarely ever watch a video twice unless I really like him. I think I watched all of his Legacy of the Worthless like two times. Plus all of his top ten videos. He's a really good storyteller. Really good at compiling interesting information and delivering it in an interesting manner. Uh, as someone who makes videos myself, I can totally see that he knows what he's doing. He also has great editing skills. I actually kind of copied his editing skills for like one of my video uh, editing skills. I should say uh, I copied one of his motion backgrounds uh, as like background footage for one of my videos. And by copied, I mean I just created an After Effects myself. Uh, but it looks kind of the same. And, uh, let's see, besides Rank 10, I guess Yu-Gi-Mation, whenever he actually uploads a video. But then again, animation takes forever to make, so you can't really fault him for infrequent uploads. Uh, and then a whole bunch of other random ones that I don't really watch as often. So mainly just those ones. Uh, especially Rank 10, he's great. You guys should all subscribe to him. I think he only has... Wait, has he sub... Has he passed the subs on this channel yet? Oh, I don't know. I think they're about the same, or else he's probably surpassed me by now. Uh, next, next question. Do you go to locals? No, I do not. The closest locals I have to my house is about half an hour drive away, and it's in a really tiny, like, card game shop. Comic book shop, yeah, that's usually where they're held. It's in a really small comic book shop, and it's really busy. Like, a whole bunch of people come to this tiny-ass little room to play. It is not the ideal location to go. I went once. Uh, I brought my Macro Monarch deck. Back when I got uh, back into Yu-Gi-Oh! I think this was like around the time I made my Yu-Gi-Oh! channel, actually, like in 2013 or something. Uh, and I went there, and I went like 2 and 3. I won two match, lost three, or maybe I went three and two. I think I went three and two. I think I won more than I lost after coming back and just going online real quick and looking at what the if my deck was still viable. That was like a year before they finally limited Macros Cosmos and Dimensional Fissure. And surprise, surprise, uh, a Macro Monarch deck was still good against meta decks that I had no idea about. And I think at this Locals, there was a whole bunch of erratic decks, and I had no idea what they were doing. It's like, you can tribute cards from your hand? What? You can only tribute cards from the field. You have to be lying. Oh, whatever. I'll, I'll believe you. Yu-Gi-Oh is crazy. They do a whole bunch of crazy things. You probably can tribute cards from your hand. I'll just believe you. <laughs> I remember I lost one of the duels because I forgot to activate Macros Cosmos when I was playing against a Light Sworn player. So he was able to beat me. And then he cited in a whole bunch of support. Uh, like Twin Twist... No, like Twister and stuff to destroy my macros cosmos and fissures no problem so i wasn't able to lock him out but if i had just activated that macros cosmos i would have beaten him that first duel you wouldn't have gotten any mill you wouldn't have been able to get out light and darkness not light and darkness dragon uh judgment dragon totally would have won i also went to another locals 
uh, like 30 minutes the other way. Like all of the locals around me are like 30 minutes away in just opposite directions. There is none that's close. And I have to drive to all of them. Actually, this one was like 45 minutes away. By car. Uh, and I don't actually have a car because I don't really need one. I, I could buy one though, but I don't really want to. Uh, and I went to that one, and I went to the locals, and there was a whole bunch of people playing Magic. And I was like, uh, isn't there a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament going on today? And they're like, uh, no one showed up. I was like, oh. Well, that's, that's inconvenient, because this store is huge. It's giant compared to that tiny-ass one-room place I went to last time that was packed full of people. So I waited around, and like two people did show up. Uh, I say two people, but two kids showed up who didn't really know how to play the game correctly. <laughs> so I pulled out my Law of the Normal deck, and because it's a really good gimmicky deck, and I just played them with that. And, uh, yeah, they didn't really know the rules, so I beat them with my crappy deck. Because they were kids, they didn't really know what they were doing. So yeah, I guess kids still do play the game. Like, when I went to the other locals where there was a whole bunch of people... Uh, there was like one kid there playing with everyone else. And I go to this one where there's no one, and it's just me and two kids. I was like, that's disappointing. This one was a little bit better. Even if it is a little bit farther away, it's in a bigger store. But no one's playing. They're all playing Magic. I don't want to play Magic. I want to play, uh, not Magic. Uh, okay, so, uh, on to the next question. Uh, what other hobbies do you have besides Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, I, I've got a lot. I used to have this problem where I hated being bored, so I uh, would research other hobbies and go into them pretty heavily. So they're all pretty basic, actually. I have them listed out. I like to play video games a lot. Uh, I like to watch anime. I usually only watch it while I eat, though. So when I eat breakfast and dinner, so they only eat two times a day, uh, I'll watch an episode of an anime. And you can get a lot done when you just watch two episodes a day. Mm. Obviously, sometimes I'll watch more than that. Plus, there's also regular TV shows on Netflix, because I don't actually watch TV. Uh, I have a TV in my room, but there's no reason to ever turn it on. So I don't ever turn it on, and instead I just use my second monitor to watch YouTube videos all day. Literally just so many YouTube videos. I watch so much YouTube that I'm pretty sure I'm addicted to it. Uh, I just have a YouTube video on all day. I have a playlist of all the people I'm subscribed to continuously going. I have a podcast open. I have other playlists of creators I like who I'm just re-watching their videos. Or I'm watching the same uh, Bo Burnham comedy video for like the 50th time. So much YouTube. The YouTube-aholic. Uh, I also make videos for YouTube too, so I guess that kind of I I, I add to the problem. Uh, but I also watch, you know, Netflix TV shows. I watched Daredevil; that was cool. Uh, Bo Jack Horseman, that show is great. Uh, yeah, so I'm not like one of those people who only ever watches anime and everything else is crazy. I don't think there are a lot of people like that. Now that I say that out loud, I have this thing in my head where people who watch anime, all they do is watch anime and nothing else. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who are well-rounded who just happen to also enjoy anime like I do. Uh, and then, of course, I read books. Uh, I like to listen to an audiobook every time I go running in the morning. Uh, I read manga at night. Every day at 12 o'clock, you know, midnight, I stop working and I just read manga for like two hours. Uh, I get a lot of reading done that way by only just reading two hours a day. And, of course, uh, making videos. I like to make videos for fun. That's why I start up second channels all the time, and then never upload in them for, like, months at a time. Uh, this channel is... It was like a branch off of my other channel. When I first started making videos, I made them for uh, a whole bunch of random shit, just because I just wanted to make videos just to make them. And one of my favorite things to do was just to build weird shit decks. Uh, so I did that, and I uploaded the videos. And uh, it kind of caught its own little following, and I just kept doing it. Uh, I like to make videos about other stuff, too. I have, like, nine or ten other channels created. Uh, of the other ones I have, only, like, two or three of them do anywhere decently well. Like, I have this channel, which has 
it's like 15,000, I think it's 17,000 now or something, around 15,000 subscribers. And then I have my other WoW channel, which has like 90,000 subscribers and does super well. Then I have another like branch off of my WoW channel, which only focuses on pet battles in WoW, which has like uh, 3,000 subs. And then I have one about just random top 10 videos, which has like a thousand, and then ones where I draw animations for jokes, which has like 500 subs. And then a couple of other just random channels about, uh, like I read Ask Reddit Threads, that one has like 200 subs. So like a whole bunch of really small channels. One of them's really big, though. Uh, and this one's decently sized. 15,000, there's a lot of people who would kill to have 15,000 subs on a channel. So this one does pretty well, considering it's just kind of something I do on the side for fun. Uh, I say that, but I do take it seriously sometimes. Like, I'm not gonna go a week without uploading videos to this channel. Just because I don't feel like playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Plus, I, I edit so much that just the whole act of making the video is really easy. But the act of actually getting good footage is what takes the longest time. Also, making a deck that doesn't suck. Uh, cause it's really hard to get a gimmick deck to work. You have no idea. Uh, next question. Do you play Card Fight Vanguard? Uh, no. I, I just thought I'd answer that because I read it on Reddit or something when I was typing in. What are some good Yu-Gi-Oh questions to ask? Uh, next question. Do you play Hearthstone? I, I did play it for a little bit when it first came out and I really enjoyed it. And then I got really bored of it uh, because... Uh, it's just not a lot of cards. Yu-Gi-Oh! has an advantage of being, you know, like 20 years old. Actually, I think it's 20 years old. I'm pretty sure it came out in like 1996 or something like that. Because I remember all the old video games would say like licensing 1996 or something. So it's really old and it just has so many cards and there's so many different decks you can build. And one of my favorite things to do in card games is to build gimmick decks. And Hearthstone, there just wasn't enough cards to build gimmick decks. Uh, a couple of years down the road now, it has a lot, and I still have no interest in going back into it. It's too slow compared to Yu-Gi-Oh. I just prefer Yu-Gi-Oh style of gameplay to Hearthstone. Uh, even if Yu-Gi-Oh is really unbalanced compared. Eh, I don't know if it really is. Hearthstone's kind of crazy too. Uh, last question. Is YouTube your job? Uh, yeah. Remember how I mentioned I have a, another channel with like 90k subs? Uh, that channel does extremely well. Uh, it does so well that it has like the same amount of views as someone who has a channel with like uh, two, one to 200,000 subscribers. I get a, I average around 2 million views a week. Not a week. That'd be crazy. Uh, I average around 2 million views a month. Uh, and... For those of you who don't know, YouTubers usually get paid by ad revenue on how much they make per video. Uh, and rat ad revenue is very fickle. There's no like uh, set number for how much you'll make for how many views you get. And it's based kind of on views and also on video length, uh, thanks to YouTube Red. YouTube Red is great, actually. If you want to support like all the people you watch on YouTube, the best way to do that is to like buy YouTube Red. Uh, if everybody had YouTube Red, uh, oh, that'd be great, actually. I'd be rich by tomorrow if everybody just bought YouTube Red. Uh, it's actually a pretty good thing for creators because your individual view isn't worth much. It's something like you make one to three dollars per thousand views. Sometimes it's like uh, 20 cents. Uh, to five dollars per thousand views. It's it varies by a crazy amount So if I get about two million views a, a month uh, That should tell you about how much I make. It's all about views, but it's also about long videos views uh, Like the 10 minute videos I make my Yu-Gi-Oh channel are perfectly fine though. I'm like this channel gets about Actually, how many views does this channel get it gets like uh, a quarter million views which is not half bad, actually. And my other channel gets about 2 million. I got 3 million one month. That was crazy. And in order to do YouTube full-time, as long as your bills... Actually, you know what? Uh, if you make about a million views per month, uh, that's about minimum wage pay. That's a good estimate. 
uh, sometimes because the system is so fickle, a million views is a really good estimate for how much you'll get paid. It's about minimum wage. Sometimes it'll be a little bit less, but most of the time it'll be uh, a, a little more or a lot more. But that's like a good middle ground because uh, some months are just worth more than others. Uh, you also make more depending on what month it is. Uh, and some months just have really shitty ad revenue. And sometimes you could get less views in a month than a previous one where you got like a million more views and still make more money because of how ad revenue works. And that all, all that to say, uh, my main other channel with a whole bunch of subscribers, it gets so many views that I'm able to do this full time, no problem. And I do the Yu-Gi-Oh! channel as well. Uh, and it also does decently well as well. But not, you know, capital G levels of well, damn. A million views from his Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. Those are aspirations. I should probably take this channel more seriously. Uh, and like upload two videos a day. If I did that, I would double the amount of views, but I don't really. That sounds like it's really hard. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Uh... I would come to not like the game that much. The way I do it now, like one video a day, I can do that. It's not too bad. Uh, because gimmick decks can be really irritating sometimes. But I could also do more edited content, like Rake 10. Uh, but then that would cut into the edited content for my other channels. I can't really do that. Unless I find an efficient way to edit it. And an efficient system to do that. Uh, so I'm not really all too worried about it. This channel is doing pretty well for what it is. And this video is really long and I did not expect that to happen. I actually wanted to keep this video under 10 minutes but I can really ramble on about stupid shit. Okay so that's the end of this video. Uh, if you have any questions for the next one which I'll make in like a month or maybe two weeks if this video does well but I'm pretty sure it won't because who wants to hear me ramble about stupid shit when they just want to watch me play Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, so yeah, just leave those questions in the comments, and I'll probably answer all of them, since I don't expect this video to get a lot of comments or views. <laughs>